Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 37 in a 10-part video series where we're learning how to automate using VRealize Orchestrator. This is actually one of a, a miniature series of six videos where we're learning specifically about how to use the PowerShell plugin for VRealize Orchestrator. So let's carry on. Um, as I said in the previous video, if you haven't seen the previous video, you'll probably want to take a look at that because it talks about what this what this uh, PowerShell plugin is and what it does. But I also mentioned in that video that this uh, series of videos is in response to a request from Manvendra. So let's uh, continue looking at his request. So if you want to, as Manvendra wants to, if you want to be able to call PowerShell scripts from your orchestrator workflows, uh, as I said in the previous video, you're going to need to configure a, um, a, a setup that looks like this. So first of all, you're going to need to, at least in the old days, you had to download the PowerShell plugin from the URL that you see on the screen here. So marketplace.vmware.com slash VSX. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the PowerShell plugin is now included in Orchestrator, so you may not need to do step number one. Step number two um, may also not be necessary. If the PowerShell plugins already installed in Orchestrator, which I think it is by default, you won't have to install it. But if you did, here's what it looks like. So again, to get started, in step one, you would open up a browser and you would go to marketplace.vmware.com slash VSX. And you would search for the plugin here. So type PowerShell, search for it, find it, download it, and the file that you get, if I recall correctly, is a file called something.vmoapp, VMO app. All right, so once you've got that file, what you would do is then connect to your orchestrator server. Uh, presumably, you would just connect to your orchestrator server by going to, hang on a sec here. Okay, there we go. Um, so you would connect to your orchestrator server by going to https colon slash 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 and then your uh, the name of your uh, VRO server. In my case, my VRO server is in my is inside of my VRA appliance. So uh, that's why this says SA dash VRA. But I'm going to my orchestrator server. And once I go to the orchestrator server, there is on this page hiding somewhere here, uh, there it is, something called the control center, formerly called the um, orchestrator configurator. Control center is the tool that you use to install a plugin. Again, I don't think we need to in this case because I think the PowerShell plugin is already installed by default, but if we need to, we would click on control center and this is just a self-signed uh, certificate warning message. So I'm going to say advanced and go ahead and proceed. But you would click on Control Center. And if you're if everything's good, you'll get to a login prompt. And you just type root, type your password, and you log into the VRO client. And as you can see here, the plugin section is where you can go to, to uh, manage your plugins. You click on Manage Plugins, click Browse to uh, locate the .vmo app file that you downloaded. Then you click upload and boom, your, your uh, PowerShell plugins already installed. But again, uh, this server here is orchestrator 7.6. If I look real closely here, uh, yeah, PowerShell's already installed by default. I'm pretty certain that this step's not necessary. Uh, and additionally, uh, the following step is likely not necessary either. But just in case you're running on an older system, if you tried to run Control Center and it didn't start, um, that's because Control Center is a service that may or may not be running. So I'm going to show you briefly here how to start that service if it wasn't running. So you would either connect to the console of your orchestrator server or use an SSH client such as PuTTY, or I'm going to use MT PuTTY, and you connect to your orchestrator server. Again, mine's called SA-VRA-01. I'll just go ahead and connect there. And if I want to see if that can Control Center service is running, I can type service VCO. Uh, that's the old acronym for VRO. It used to be called vCenter Orchestrator. So VCO dash configure configurator is the old name for what you, is currently called the control center. Status would 
uh, let you know whether or not Control Center is not running. If you came in here and saw that it's not running, you could start the configurator just by changing the command slightly to start. Uh, or conversely, if you want to stop this, the Control Center server, you can type stop. And since I happen to be here, even though this is completely unrelated to PowerShell, uh, let me show you one other thing. Service, VCO, server, status, and start and stop and restart. Um, this command here, this uh, option here, VCO server, will allow you to affect the orchestrator server itself. So um, VCO configurator is the control center utility. VCO server is your orchestrator server, which you can get status, start, stop, and so forth. But anyways, I don't think any of step one or step two are gonna be necessary because I'm pretty certain you've got a new enough version of orchestrator that you've already got the PowerShell plugin installed. But you might wanna go into Control Center to confirm that you've got uh, the PowerShell plugin installed. Or you could go into the Vero client, go to the inventory tab and see if it, you see PowerShell plugin there. Anyways, step one and step two are probably not gonna be necessary. So let's move on to step three. As you can see in step three, you're gonna to need to install PowerShell onto a Windows system. I'm not a Microsoft expert, I'm not a Windows expert. I don't know how you install PowerShell. I always assumed it was just part of Windows itself. Um, but you're gonna to have to get, if, if, if PowerShell is not part of Windows, then you're gonna to have to download it, install it, and do whatever it is to get PowerShell up and running. Additionally, you're going to need to install WinRM. Uh, WinRM starts with WIM, so I've always assumed WinRM is from Microsoft. I've always assumed it's installed on Windows machines by default, but if it's not, you're going to have to figure out how to install WinRM. So I'm not going to show you, I'm, I'm not a Windows guy, I'm not a Microsoft guy, so I'm not going to focus on um, steps two or three. You can look at other online resources to figure out how to do those. Instead, I want to focus on the part of the the Windows side that you have to set up for our PowerShell plugin to work. And that's to configure WinRM. Uh, by the way, I am shamelessly uh, making use of the information that you can see by going to the blog post that you see listed here on the bottom of the screen. And just before I go any further, I should point out here a few things about this um, series of videos on, on PowerShell. Uh, one of the things I want you to know is I do not have a lab environment in which I can show you how to do all these things. I've got um, a lot of the pieces I would like to have, but I don't have that Windows platform. I don't have PowerShell. I don't have WinRM. But uh, I do have some notes that I took earlier um, years ago, the last time I did have to set this up from scratch. So let me show you what you have to do in WinRM. And admittedly, this is a bit rusty, but let's see how we can do here. Okay, with the WinRM command, uh, you can run WinRM from your Windows machine and type things like WinRM space quick config. What can, quick config is going to do is to set up some default values for the numerous settings that you set up in WinRM. You could set all the settings from scratch, but it's a lot quicker to just say WinRM quick config. That'll get us the bulk of the settings that we need. But there are a few settings that Quick Config doesn't include that we need you to set up. So let's continue onwards here. Uh, I'll show you those, but just before we do, the WinRM command that you see here, WinRM-E, WinRM slash config slash listener, will give you uh, different information, but in particular, it will tell you what port number WinRM is listening to for HTTP connections, uh, and or HTTPS connections. Again, throughout this series of videos on Win on Power um, Shell plugin for Orchestrator, I'm assuming we're just doing HTTPS. And notice here that the port number for that is not port 80; it's port 5985. Uh, that's not VMware that picked that. That's Microsoft or whoever created WinRM. So you're going to want to make certain that you run this command to make certain that if you are making unencrypted connections, that that this is the port number 58. 5985 is the port number that WinRM should be listening on. So continuing onwards here, uh, in the previous video, I told you that we, or VMware, with our PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator, support either basic authentication to the WinRM um, server or Kerberos. Uh, if you wanna learn how to set up Kerberos, that's outside the scope of this video. But for basic, what you're gonna do is, well, first of all, you might want to see if basic authentication is turned on already. If you run winrm git, 
You're going to see a bunch of WinRM git commands in this video. Um, the git option here obviously says I want to find out what the settings are. So if you say WinRM git WinRM slash config, that's going to show you a whole bunch of settings. And the one that you're looking for to tell whether or not basic authentication is allowed is uh, actually, as you see over here, will be a line that says uh, curly brace basic equal true uh, in quotes, close curly brace. So you run this command up above and look for the line that says basic equals, and it'll either say false or it'll say true. If we're gonna do basic authentication, you need this to say true. If it doesn't say true, then you'll run this command. So winrm set winrm slash config slash service slash auth. And then you have to use this exact syntax with this exact capitalization, exact spelling, gotta get it right. So it's at curly brace, open curly brace, capital B basic equal double quote true double quote close curly brace and if you want to double check that that command worked correctly just run this command again and again look for the line that says basic equals and ultimately you want it to say basic equals true because uh, I am showing you in this video how to do basic authentication so basic equal true all right continuing onwards here uh, we are in this video taking a look at how to set up VRO and WinRM to do unencrypted connections. Instead of HTTPS, we're just going to use unencrypted HTTP. So we're going to do a similar command, WinRM set, WinRM slash config slash service at allow unencrypted equals true would set up WinRM to allow unencrypted connections. Again, if you want to, you could start by doing WinRM git, blah, 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 leave this tail portion off to see if that value is already set to true. But ultimately, one way or another, you need it to be set up allowed unencrypted, excuse me, allow unencrypted equals true. So uh, thus far, we've got our basic authentication set up and our uh, un allowed unencrypted set up. You also need to enable basic authentication on the WinRM client. And I have to confess here, um, looking at this, this looks exactly like, other than this uh, mention of the word client versus service two slides ago, says the exact same thing. Um, so again, you might want to go back to the article I mentioned here to double check my work, but uh, you need to make certain that basic authentication is enabled. Again, I'm not quite certain in my notes here why I have this twice, but, Continuing onwards, it's the same basic idea. And again, we repeat this again for the client side. Um, the commands are slightly different from a few slides ago, but winrm set winrm slash config slash client allow unencrypted equals true. You need it to be set to true. In winrm, you also need to set up winrm so that it has, uh, a, it, so that it knows about your orchestrator server. So you'll run a command. You can see the basic format of the command here. The part that we need to talk about here is uh, the setting is trusted hosts. And you need to put in your FQDN of your orchestrator server. For instance, vro.example.com. That way, WinRM will ex expect and allow connections from uh, whichever host you specify here. And again, that's not host in the ESXi sense of the word host. That's your orchestrator server. All right, so those are our settings. Except wait, after you've set up your settings, it'd be a good idea to make certain that you've set up everything correctly here. So the command that you see here, winrm identify dash r, blah, 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 blah. Um, this command here uh, needs to succeed. If this is not succeeding, do not bother going to the next video. Do not try creating an orchestrator workflow that calls PowerShell CLI scripts. If this command, this test, connection command fails, you've got to fix this problem on the Windows machine before you're ever going to be able to do anything useful with the PowerShell plugin on the orchestrator side. Okay, admittedly, that's a lot of steps, um, but you can go back and replay the video and hit pause in the appropriate places as you set up your WinRM server. Uh, let me just go back real quickly here to our overview of the steps that you're going through. So again, in steps one and two, we are dealing with the orchestrator server. And then in steps three, four, five, we're dealing with the Windows machine. At this point, if your connection test succeeded, you're done with dealing with the, the Windows side. The only thing you'll need to do with the Windows side from there on out is to um, create or um, upload your, your PowerShell scripts. That's where the scripts are actually gonna reside. 
Okay, so that's it for video number 37. In video number 38, what we're going to be taking a look at, uh, we're going to go back to Orchestrator and take a look at how you can create the connection between the Orchestrator server and your WinRM server.